Well, hello everyone. We're here this morning recording. It's uh, Thursday morning, May the 28th, record recording for this coming Sunday, uh, May the 31st. So this month of May has gotten by us. Uh, the title of the lesson today uh, for this coming Sunday is REACH, R-E-A-C-H, and it's talking about and dealing with reaching out Noel to other people. In other words, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, it comes out of Romans, the 15th chapter, verses 14 through 21, and then it moves to verses 30 through 33. Uh, but the point of the lesson is believers must make every effort to share the gospel with everyone they come in contact with. And so that's, that's the whole uh, point of it, Noel. I thought about Acts 1-8 when I, when I started reading this because uh, Jesus said to His disciples there, uh, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world yeah. uh, or the earth. So uh, anyway, it's, uh, I guess, the sin of omission is for most of us Christians, we're going to, uh, thank goodness all of our sins are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, but the sin of omission, uh, not doing those things that we know we ought to do, and probably sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ for most Christians is at the top of the list of the things they know they ought to do that they don't do. Yeah. And, and uh, I'll be honest with you, it's that way with my family, but it seems as though the ones that we love the most, our families, uh, sometimes it's the hardest to... Uh, to get into those conversations with. Yeah. And uh, so it's a good lesson today, taking out again the book of Romans. Uh, uh, and Paul uh, is actually closing this letter here today by reminding the Romans uh, believers that why uh, he was writing to them, that he was writing to them, uh, that it was, uh, he felt responsible to all the Gentiles. Of course, he's called by the grace of God. We'll get into that uh, to uh, minister to the Gentiles. And, and he was uh, going to Rome. Uh, he's talking about all the places in Turkey, what modern day Turkey and Greece. Uh, but he wanted to travel on to Rome and then uh, go on to Spain. Uh, to, to minister there, and we'll get into that, that he wanted to go where no other man has set a foundation. In other words, he wanted to go to those who uh, we call them today in our society, we call them those uh, unreached uh, people groups, and they're all over the world, that they yeah. never have heard of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, True. Noel, if you want to, why don't you... Uh, Go ahead and give us a little background uh, on chapter 15 here of the book of Romans, and we'll get started here. Let me lead us in a word of prayer before yeah. we do, though. Let's pray. Father God, we do praise you and we worship you this day. And Father, we do humble ourselves before you. God, we realize that uh, life is uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like that, uh, that blade of grass. Uh, it's here today and it's gone tomorrow, Father. We just had two funerals, uh, one yesterday and one Tuesday, here right here in this sanctuary. And, and so, Father, we realize how important it is for people to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And God, we thank you again for your word because it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts through the quick and the mire. Uh, God, it gets to the point that uh, people need to, to know and, and admit that they're a sinner. They need to come to that uh, time in their life of realizing what you've done for them through Jesus Christ and Calvary's cross. And God, then they have to make the decision whether they're going to, through faith, believe and trust in it or not. Uh, your redemptive plan through Christ and, and His life, death, and resurrection. So, Father, this morning, as Noel and I talk about uh, uh, these verses, God, uh, we just ask for Your outpouring of Your Holy Spirit upon us. And, God, uh, for those who watch this this week, God, we pray Your blessings upon them. And may we all be convicted, Father, that uh, we need to be sharing the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, more so than what we do. Uh, because we all can have room for improvement. So, Father, we pray this in Jesus' name, asking your blessings. Amen. 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 Well, Brother Noel, share with us. Okay. Well, Paul continues in chapter 15 discussing the law concerning believers, the mm -hmm. law of love concerning believers, mm -hmm. and, and doubtful behavior. Yeah. In chapter 14, he talked about weak Christians who, who felt that um, they had to observe certain things right. to be acceptable to God, but the stronger Christian felt that they are led by the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. and they don't they don't have to be um, re regulated or 
do certain rituals and right. di different things in order to please God. And that was causing a lot of tension in the church. Wasn't yeah, it? and and Paul Paul makes some uh, statements. He he wants he wants peace in the body of Christ, mm. and he says that we are to receive one another. And that's in chapter fourteen, one through twelve. We should receive one another just like Christ received us. Amen. We are to build up each other in the body of Christ. We are to try to please one another and we are to rejoice with one another. So, so Paul continues this law of love concerning the believer in, in doubtful behavior. Um, Christians should not be selfish. You know, we shouldn't be self-centered. We should always be trying to please others instead of ourselves. Um, and Paul is using Christ as the supreme example in, in verses like three, mm -hmm. three and four. He says, for even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. Mm -hmm. So in other words, all the, um, the accusations, uh, uh, you know, that that's against man fell on Christ yep. and he paid the price for all of us. So, and then he says in verse four that the things were written before were written for our learning. He's talking about the prophecies and um, Paul and Peter quote a lot of the Old Testament in the New Testament, right. you know. So, he did that. Huh? He, he continually did that uh, yeah. many times and a lot of the New Testament writers did. Uh, quote you know, in verse six, he says that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. We should have um, respect for one another in the body of Christ. Amen. We shouldn't argue and debate things that really are not that important to the to the main goal of reaching right. people for Christ. You know, um, so I think what it amounts to, if, if Jesus is the Lord of your life and Jesus is the Lord of my life, we ought to be able to get along. That's right. There's no, that, no, that's just it. We ought to yeah. be able to get along. Yeah, that's right. And um, so in verse, you know, um, seven, he says, therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. We are not our own. We've been bought. The Christian has been bought with a price, the blood of Jesus. Amen. And, and, and it is not, we shouldn't be living for ourselves because we don't even belong to ourselves, you know. Um, I don't know how much you want to go into. Well, that, that's, that's getting on to where we, we begin. And, and uh, as, as you move down, of course, they quote some of the Old Testament again there. Yeah. Uh, beginning there in verse 9 and moving forward. Uh, but, but I think, you know, it's... Uh, we ought to we ought to bring glory to God together as brothers and sisters in Christ. That's the idea behind this first part. That it's it's nothing that we've done. It's what God's done for us through Jesus Christ. And that uh, that uh, whether I'm strong and you're weak, or you're weak and I'm strong, I ought to love you as a brother in Christ. And if I'm the strong one or you're the strong, we ought to help the weaker to to grow in His likeness. And That's if we right. if we don't do that, then we're missing the mark. You we're, know, we're and not I, doing what we're. And I think the only way we can. The only way we can grow is to study the Word. You have to get into the Word. You if know? you don't study the Word, you're not going to know what God has for us. And here, you, know? you and I are two of the smartest men in St. Tammany Parish. <laughs> but until we get into the Word of God, you know, we, we only have what we believe and what we think. But when you get into the Word of God, you've got what God has said and what is the truth and yeah. the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And so when we're studying it, then we're studying the right thing. We're not studying philosophy. We're not studying uh, what uh, opinions. We're studying the Word of God. Yeah. And that's the only way you have a firm foundation. And the whole purpose is to build that relationship yep. between us and God. Amen. You know, to know. You know, this might not, I don't want to chase any rabbits here, but yesterday my, my grandson Morgan and I, we were talking, and we was passing by the, um, the sheriff's office. Right. And I, and I saw some guys and some inmates over there and I told Morgan, I said, Morgan, we, we did all the floors in that building, mm -hmm. ceramic and carpet tiles. I said, no, I said, I didn't do it. I, I sold the materials. The inmates did the job. Did the job. Hmm. So he says, Papa, how, how come the inmates did the job? Do they know what they're doing? 
I said, yeah. I said, you got, you got inmates who are first-class carpenters, yeah. uh, floor people, painters, roofers, sheet rockers. So they use a lot of the inmates to do some of the work for mm -hmm. the parish. And I said, it's not that they don't have gifts and talents, but they just don't have the wisdom of God. Amen. And I said, I said, how, how do you get wisdom? And he said, by acknowledging God. Yeah. So Amen. That's, that's basically Coming out of the mouths of babes. Huh? That's basically what we're God. talking about. We, we need to know God. Yeah. And the more we know of God, the more we can um, know how to live and how to treat others. Sure. Well, the, the lesson itself breaks down uh, verses 14 through 16, uh, talking about fulfill your calling. Would you like to read 14 and, uh, through 16? And, okay. and let's talk about those uh, to get started with. Okay, he says, Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you on some points as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, well, let's stop right there for now. But, but uh, what he's getting into here is, that, and he uses the word now, I myself. Uh, and, and so what Paul is saying, I'm confident is what the, the scripture says. But what he's doing when he uses that I myself, he's, he's driving home the point of his conviction that they were confident. Uh, yeah. I mean, he was confident in them uh, concerning you, my brethren. And he uses the word brother and what he'd been talking about. He's kind of changing tone here just a little bit uh, using the word brother. And that's more family like than than over here dealing with all the the uh, differences they have with the weak and the strong Christians, uh, not in the sacrifices, the dietary uh, uh, ceremonies they do and all that. Yeah. So he's changing the tone a little bit here, trying to get a little warmer to him, I think. And, yeah. and by saying, I myself am, and, am confident concerning you, that, yeah. that uh, he wants them to know, even though he's been a little stricter, a little sterner, I guess you yeah. could say, uh, talking in, in chapter 14 and all about all this, that now he wants them to understand and he wants to edify them and build them up. Uh, yeah, he has, he has a good word for the believers at Rome. Amen. And, and he wants those, he wants other people to know about the believers in Rome yeah. that, that they were spiritually mature. They were right. full of goodness. They were knowledgeable of sound doctrine. Amen. And they were capable of admonishing or, or cautioning gently one another. One another. Edifying, building up, helping the weaker. To, they, they were very capable people of doing that. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is the way that God still intends the church to operate today. That uh, everybody, uh, the, uh, Paul uses the analogy of the body. We all have different uh, parts of our body, but they all work together for the whole of the body. And that's the way the church, you use your gifts, I use mine. Someone else uses theirs and someone else theirs. And it all works together to edify and build up the body of yeah. Christ. And he says in verse 15 that Paul reminds them that they are strong in the Lord only by the grace of God. Amen. And Paul can only teach and preach because of the grace of God given yeah. to him. Right. He doesn't boast in himself. No. Nope. He boasts in Christ speaking through him. Right. And yeah. boasting in himself would be be borderline, you know, getting, getting prideful and all that, which is sin. Uh, yeah. So he's just simply saying there, uh, but it is that grace given to him by God to minister to the Gentiles. You know, Paul's experience was quite different from mine coming to, to faith. Of course, he was on the Damascus Road and blinded uh, for three days and, and, and uh, went through a lot there. Uh, boy, I tell you, uh, that ought to make a believer out of you yeah. uh, to go through that. But, but here he's just simply saying, you know, I see in you something that is... Uh, uh, very good. Uh, yes, I've had to be strict to you some, but at the same time, uh, you, through the grace of God, have the ability to uh, admonish, help one another. And I, as an apostle of Jesus Christ, called by God to minister to the you Gentiles, uh, right. that's, that's uh, God's right. grace has given me that ability. That's right. And he says in verse 16, 
that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, and the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Right here, you have the Trinity. You have the involvement of the right. Trinity. You have, God you have um, Paul was a minister of Jesus Christ. Amen. He preached the gospel of God the Father, and he served in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you know? uh, I'm telling you, for you and I to be able to walk daily like uh, uh, under those uh, uh, headings, uh, we, we would be uh, uh, doing what God would have us do, wouldn't we? Yes. So We'd be accomplishing what God would have us accomplish. You know, but um, Paul is saying he, the grace given to him mm -hmm. has enabled him to be a minister of Christ. Right. If it wasn't for God's grace, he couldn't do it. Well, and and no one can do it. No one can do it. And that's why he adds there, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. We're set apart by the Holy Spirit. When, when we as Christians invite Christ into our life and repent of our sins and, and ask God, uh, acknowledge our sins and ask God forgiveness of those sins, then, then we are, God fills us with the Spirit. It, it's, uh, we are continually being filled in the Greek language. It's not a one-time thing. Well, pour it in and okay, that's all you get. No, it's a lifelong process. Yeah. And that's how we can all, we're set apart. The word sanctified means set apart. We're set apart by the Holy Spirit of God to do the things that God would have us do. That's and right. one of those things is we're fixing to get into is uh, is, is promote and, and uh, share the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In verse 17 it says, Therefore I have reason to glory in Christ Jesus right. in the things which pertain to God. Paul will boast only in what Christ did through him. Amen. He doesn't boast in his own um, self, but only in what Christ did through him. Right. And, you know, in, in uh, another scripture, he talks about where he was shipwrecked, snake bit, beaten, all those things, jailed, all those things. Uh, but but it, he never brought it to, he said, you know, uh, if you want to be a... a, a an Israelite, well, I can, you know, I, I mean, I can be a Jew. I can be the most pious of all, not an Israelite or Jew. I yeah. can be most pious of all, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to boast in myself, but I, I will boast in Jesus Christ. And, and they call it boast about Jesus in the, in the lesson here, verses 17 through 19, but that's exactly what he's doing. And that's what we ought to do. We ought to be willing and not be shameful of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we're Christians, we ought to be willing to, to share that every opportunity God gives us uh, you to know, share. You know, I was thinking this morning, I was thinking, we think of the privilege we as believers have to know the Creator the Almighty God, the God who became a man, died and rose from right. the dead, right. and we can know Him. Amen. Personally. Personally. Yeah. You know, and intimately. That's, yeah, yeah. And that's good news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's good news. You know, I, I watch TV sometimes, and they uh, uh, flipping through uh, channels. Uh, not that we men flip much, but anyway. <laughs> uh, but you see the, the how the universe. Uh, uh, began and all those shows about all the planets and all that and I sat back sometimes and all listen to some of those people talking about their theory of how things began yeah. when I know according to the Word of God and my faith that God spoke it into me yeah and the more and more scientists and evolutionists try to disclaim the Word of God the more things they mm -hmm. discover that the Bible is true and that there is a God mm -hmm. um, what are we at 18 yeah, oh, 19, well, yeah, well, eighteen and nineteen, they kind of go together. Okay, there. for I will not, for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed, to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about to. El Lyricum. <laughs> yeah, well, it's El Rickum, I believe. El Rickum. So El Rickum. El yeah. Rickum. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul was obedient from the beginning to preach the gospel of Christ. From the he yielded at the Damascus Road, mm -hmm. and he hadn't stopped since. Nope. You know, he and, never looked to the left or the right or back. He always looked forward to where God was, yeah. was leading him. He preached salvation through Jesus Christ, the Son of God from Jerusalem all the way through Macedonia 
to the area around Elricum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you say? El Rickum. El, El Rickum. El, El, yeah, Rickum. El is pronounced in an El Rick, R I C. And it comes El Rickum. Yeah. Uh, I have a hard time with English, yeah. more or less. Uh, well, I do too. You know. <laughs> uh, but but that's about 1,400 miles. Yeah. He and traveled. You know, and, what he, and, and what he says here is that uh, uh, in, in verse 19, in mighty signs and wonders, that goes all the way back, uh, Noah, uh, Noel, to uh, where God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt through many signs and wonders, you know, using that language, figurative language that they all understood, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the power of God, just as God delivered the Israelites, and they could relate to that. And you can go back to Exodus 7, 3 and Deuteronomy 11, 3, where it talks about signs and wonders of God doing that, delivering them out. Well, here he uses those, that same terminology uh, in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. Uh, that from Jerusalem to El Rickham, uh, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. That that it's through God's power, and Paul gave all credit to God. You know, yeah. uh, we we need to give credit where credit's due. And and uh, you know, the only reason as as men, uh, as Christians, as brothers in Christ, we're able to be what we need to be is through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. And if we try to do it without it, we're wasting our time we're, and, no, and the time uh, of anybody listening. <laughs> yeah, and we can't accomplish it. I mean, yeah. we just can't be who we need to be without uh, God. I, I, I don't think that it's within mankind, man, woman, boy, girl, call it what you will. But I, God knew when Jesus uh, said in John 14 that I must go that he, the counselor, the comforter might come. God knew that, hey, we needed some help. To yeah. walk the walk as we talk the talk, we need help. We can't do it on our own. We're human. And, and God gave us the access to Himself and His power through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. And to be honest with you, because of that, we're without excuse. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And verse 20 says, And so I have made it my aim to mm -hmm. preach the gospel. Now, where's the gospel? The death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ. Amen. The good news. Good news. Not where Christ was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not announced, they shall see. And those who have not heard shall understand. You know, Paul had a desire to preach the gospel where no other man had been. Ha has preached before. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was a missionary. He yeah. was, he was uh, as well as a theologian and a scholar and a soul winner, he was an evangelist. Yeah, very much so. And, you know. and, and for him to, to want to go to those places, I mean, you know, we can be very comfortable in a nice church, can't we? Yeah. And have a family of God. Uh, this building is a nice building. It's not the church. We are the church, the members of the church. But we can get very comfortable here that we come here on Sunday, we worship, uh, and we can get very closed mouth about sharing the gospel because, yeah. hey, we're doing what we know we need to be doing. We're, we're going to church. We're studying God's word. But, Noel, if we, we're totally missing the mark of who God wants us to be if we're not. Uh, we've got this Who's Your One coming up on the 14th that uh, we, we were well into it. We had many people commit uh, that they had a, they put names in the, in the manger scene below the cross here. And, and I'm praying and we're praying as staff, and I know all members are praying, that, that many people will bring their person that they, some of them not sure, uh, others are very sure that they hadn't uh, have a relate. They don't have a relationship with Christ. I hope they bring them on on the second Sunday here in June, the fourteenth, uh, when yeah. when Brother Gary Boland's going to be here to preach because that's that's the bottom line of what Paul's saying here. You know, I'm not going to go build where somebody else did. Well, these are people in who's your one people that we've known. From, some of them family members we've known for years. We love them. We we want them to have that uh, eternal life. Uh, uh, in heaven with God and not separated yeah. in a place of, of Hades. But, but uh, we just need to, we need to do everything we can as Christians to try to reach as many people as possible because I'm telling you, we're only here for a short time. Yeah, and you know, it seems to me sometimes that a lot of churches try to entertain people to draw them into the church. Yeah. Paul didn't use entertainment. He went to Ephesus and Philippi and Corinth and he went to all these metropolitan cities, centers, 
and he just preached the word. He preached the word and let the chips fall where they may. He built a church. He, he, well, he, he built the, the body of Christ through the word of God, not, not through gimmicks or anything to try to get the people in. If you use gimmicks to get them in, you got to use gimmicks to, to keep, keep them. them. And, and the thing is, uh, it's a feel good religion is what it is that when you leave out of here, I, I can remember years ago, someone saying something good is going to happen to you today. OK, uh, and, and it, the, the, so many today. And I think over here in Houston, there's a young man over that way that that uh, tries to make everybody feel great about themselves. Well, I'm sorry. Sometimes we need to see the other side of self and the Bible will point it out to us if we'll uh, preach it and teach it the way it is, because God is love. But God is also righteous, and and we're we we have both aspects of God in the Word of God, and you can't just preach all the time on love and how great things are going to be, uh, and how God's going to bless you, uh, if you don't talk about okay the sin in your life or one's life that they have to change in order for God to uh, bless you. Yeah, I think the message Paul had was the gospel. Amen. <laughs> he he didn't try to um, do tricks or or tell right. jokes or entertain, you know. Well, he was, like you said a while ago, he was a missionary in a true sense of the word because he wanted to go to those places where nobody else had had uh, uh, spoken the word uh, to give as many people as possible the opportunity to, to uh, sh hear the good news yeah. that Christ died for the Gentile as well as the Jew. Yeah. And he wanted them to know that. Uh, seek the lost is, is how they break up verses 20 and 21 there. That's who Paul was. He was, uh, he was seeking the lost where, where they just didn't have an idea. Yeah. Now, we're going to go to verse 30. Yeah, 30 through 31 is, is the next. Uh, you want to read 33. it? 33, yeah, I'll read it. <laughs> it says, uh, Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. And these are the reasons why. That I may be, be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints. That I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Okay. Paul is pleading with the Christian Romans, the Roman Christians, that they will pray for him in his journey mm -hmm. back to Jerusalem. Right. Paul had, he collected money um, from the area of Macedonia right. to bring it back to Jerusalem to the Jews who were in need. You know, they were still being persecuted. Right. You know, they didn't have anything. They were kicked out of the synagogue and they probably lost their jobs and all kinds of you things. Know. So Paul um, was facing many dangers on his journey back to Jerusalem. And he's asked the Roman Christians to pray for him. Yeah. Um, he says the first thing he asks that they pray with him and for him on his journey, that he may be delivered from the unbelieving Jews once right. he once he got there. Right. And also, he was praying that the believing Jews would accept Gentile money. Exactly. The, and with the same spirit in which it was given. Yeah. That this is, we did this because we love you and the Lord, that God has laid it on our heart to take up this collection. And, and you, even though you're Jewish, you're my brother in Christ, my sister in Christ, and we want to help you in your time of need. That's exactly what he's talking about. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, Say, say if someone won money at the casino and they gave it to the church, would the church say, well, I don't want that money? <laughs> well, my theory on that now, and I may not every preacher agree with me, my theory is you need to get it out of the hands of the sinners and into the work of the Lord. But, so so uh, this preacher would accept it. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but Paul was, was hoping that the believing Jews will accept the offering of right. the Gentiles. You know. you know, and we talk about prejudice today, and some people want to dwell on it more than what I think there is because they just won't let it die, so to speak. But, but between the Jew and the Gentile, there was as prejudice as much as any two groups of people has ever been. Yeah. You know. Uh, I mean, they, they would, uh, walking down the road, uh, uh, the Good Samaritan, you know, they would walk on the other side of the road to be uh, away from somebody that uh, was a Gentile because yeah. they were unclean in their minds. Yeah. 
and and also he prayed that they that he may go to Rome with joy by the will of God mm -hmm. and that he and they would be refreshed both physically and spiritually mm -hmm. you know Paul didn't know he was going to go to Rome to a Roman prison <laughs> right <laughs> you know, right when he left Jerusalem he left on a on a boat yeah and they got, they got shipwrecked yeah and he went, it wasn't a, uh, we wouldn't think it would be a refreshing uh, journey, you know, like a, a, a cruise, you right. know. But it was, uh, he, he always had peace with God, no matter what he went through. What circumstances he found himself then. Yeah. Well, they call verses 30 through uh, 33 partners with uh, others. In other words, that's what he's talking about. He's talking to the Roman Christians who took up this offering for the Jewish Christians back in Jerusalem. And, and God meant for us to partner together. He, he didn't mean for us to be lone rangers. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like our church. Yes, we're a church and we believe different from other churches in our community in some ways, but they're still Christians just as much as we're Christians. And we need to partner together to reach our community. That's right. and, and, and doctrinal issues, uh, if, as long as, me personally, as long as we can be right on Jesus Christ. Yeah. Who he, who he is, what He did, and through salvation comes through Him, nothing more, nothing less. It's by God's grace and all that. You know, I, I can, if you choose to sprinkle, I, I think the Bible teaches submersion. That's what I do. But I can love you in the Lord. I'm not going to fall out over you sprinkling somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. as far as baptism, I'm not going to do it because we're brothers in Christ. Yeah. And he says, Now the God of peace be with you all. <clears throat> he ends with a beautiful closing to both the weak and the strong. Right. He, he's talking to the Jew and the Gentile that the peace of God be with them all. And you know, Paul did experience the peace of God. He was in prison and he sang in, while he was in prison. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was in chains, he was in storms, he was shipwrecked. And, and he had a peace about him that others recognized and respected. Right. And, uh, and we should pray that we might have that kind of peace in our heart, yeah. in our lives. Sometimes just some little things might get me upset, but then that's because I took my God, my eyes off of God. Well, and just you like know. this pan, uh, pandemic with uh, COVID-19, uh, there, there, evidently there are, because they talk about it on television and all so much about people being uh, stressed out and people being uh, depressed and all those things. Well, these are circumstances of life. I, I'd rather had not been here. I mean, I'm like everybody else. I uh, wish we never heard of COVID-19, but they're here. And, and if you have rest in God, okay, if, if I get it and die, <laughs> I gain. That's what Paul says in Philippians, you know, I yeah. gain because I'm with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if I don't get it, well, then I'm blessed that I can uh, hopefully uh, minister to others and, and uh, be able to, to do those things God would have me to do in a time like this. Yeah. But uh, we, the, the peace of God is that internal relationship with Jesus Christ that helps us through matter, no matter what our circumstances, to deal with life's issues because we all have them in our families, health-wise, uh, in our families, in our extended families, in our church families. I mean, we're human, and yeah. humans are fallible. Yeah, and, and, and one way to have peace, maybe really the only true way to have peace, is to not look, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4.18, mm -hmm. while we do not look at the things which are seen, mm -hmm. but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, right. but the things which are seen are eternal. Right. No matter what problem we go through, we should say, and this too shall pass. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's temporary. And it is. And it yeah. is. And, and, you know, some things we, were, we, we would uh, hope and pray that they'd be more temporary than others, uh, but, but they are. I mean, yeah. there's there's only a few things. I used to say, what, uh, the only two things you can count on is paying taxes and, and dying, you know? <laughs> uh, well, there are places you can go and you may not have to pay taxes, but you will die if Jesus tarries. Yeah. Uh, but, but uh, you know, Paul, this whole book, the study of Romans is a very uh, deep, in-depth 
study of the doctrine of the gospel yeah. of, of Jesus Christ, uh, the whole thing. And and uh, Paul in this last chapter now in verse 16, and we don't have time to get into it, but he pretty well, it's, it's talking about all the different people that uh, Paul wants to give... Uh, uh, praise to to some extent but he wants to acknowledge him at least of all the work that they've done because uh, as he led into it here uh, as as talking about the the partners with others all these people then named in 16 were people he partnered with in spreading yeah. the gospel of Jesus Christ that's yeah. why I say we as churches ought to be partnered and we do to some extent we partner through the cooperative program by all means with many churches as, as Southern Baptist, but we also partner with other churches and the food bank and, and different things to help people. Yeah. You know, we take up an offering here in, in this community at Thanksgiving for the, for the uh, Benevolence Fund, for the Community Benevolence Fund, and, and people give to it. And uh, that's all of us brothers and sisters giving to support a need of uh, people who are less fortunate in the community. You know, and those that God has given, they need to help others. Yeah. I don't think God gave us money just to hoard it. No. He gave us money no. to help others, you know, in need. And I know. haven't seen too many people try to take it with them either. No. Uh, so. No. Well, it's but, been it's been a great study. Uh, uh, for those of you, uh, we may continue doing this because we we are starting Sunday school on uh, June the seventh, uh, the first Sunday here in June, uh, and and uh, we have no idea what the attendance may be. We're praying for good attendance, but we also know that uh, not everybody's comfortable yet coming back together with all that's been going on with this virus. So uh, uh, we may continue doing this, uh, Noel and I, on Thursdays, uh, recording it so that it'll be out there for, for Sunday. Uh, and, and we may come up with, a, a, well, we'll just have to come up with a different book of the Bible or whatever to study. But I think that it would be a, a great thing uh, uh, for those who, who don't feel comfortable in coming to Sunday school for a while through the month of June, maybe anyway, for us to keep recording a weekly lesson and putting out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, do you have any last thoughts? We've got about well, probably three minutes or so. Yeah, I was just thinking, if you was to summarize the book of Romans and had a, had a key verse, mm -hmm. I would think it would be Romans 1, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Mm -hmm. For it is, for in it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. I think that's the message of Romans. It is. And of course, I, I like Romans 12:1. Yeah. Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, uh, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not con be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, getting into God's word, uh, and that you may prove what it, that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, a very theological book, very uh, theology meaning thinking and all. Uh, but we do uh, thank all of you who do watch this weekly. Uh, we pray, uh, we have prayed that you get something uh, certainly out of it, that uh, God blesses you. Uh, but remember again that we will uh, start Sunday school on, on, May, on June the 7th. And uh, uh, we have it in the newsletter that will be mailed out today. Uh, which classes. Uh, we're not able to have it for bed babies or one-year-olds at this time. Uh, but we'll get that back online just as soon as we can. But uh, all the other classes are meeting. Yeah, so uh, we're looking forward to it. And, and if you don't feel comfortable in coming, well, that's your prerogative and don't feel bad about that. Uh, my wife is not going to be able to come because she doesn't have an immune or an autoimmune system. And there's others. I know your wife has the same situation yeah. to some extent. Yeah. So uh, some people don't need to be with those extenuating uh, physical uh, circumstances don't need to be getting around people quite yet and so uh, for those of you that do though we want to invite you to Sunday school uh, do remember if you will to bring your one on uh, June the 14th the second Sunday in June for uh, brother uh, Gary Bolin uh, the evangelist will be here with us and he always does a great job and uh, don't forget that uh, brother Clark's still on for Wednesday nights uh, and uh, for Sunday mornings too so 
Uh, we look forward to all that uh, God's going to open up. We look forward to what the governor is going to say here. I think he's going to speak on the uh, 1st of June, and then uh, that's going to let us know what the phase two will be of reopening. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to start June 5th. So yeah. anyway, well, God bless each and every one of you. Uh, Noel, again, yeah. thank you so much you. for coming and being a part of this. Uh, Matt Janke, uh, we thank you for being here. Uh, Matt's fixing to go back to work. Uh, I know that that's going to be hard on him, but uh, he, he's going to have to go ahead and do it anyway. But Matt, we do thank you so much for being here each week and taking of your time uh, to help not only Noah and myself, but I know you've helped Matt Smith with the children also. So God bless you, and, and we pray God's blessings on you as you start traveling with your job. But uh, we love you folks, and God bless you, and may God get the glory out of all of our lives. Amen. 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 Amen.